So a short while ago, a gentleman by the name of Lewis Rossman watched my video where I baked a video card and made a video response outlining what a, an idiot I was. He said a lot of bad words and a lot of mean things. Very often the issue that somebody is having when they have no video or something is dead is not an issue that you're going to fix by taking a heat gun to it, by putting it into an oven, by burning it. So I showed up here in New York City at his shop to either get an apology out of him or for him to restate that in fact he is right and show me his super fancy soldering rework multiple thousands of dollar setup that is actually how you repair graphics cards or other PCBs properly. Let's find out which one of those things it's going to be. Okay, so uh, employees only means nothing to me, so I guess we'll just uh, go ahead and head inside. Look at all this stuff. It's like Linus's paradise. Broken Max. Knock, knock. Come on. So uh, here we are. The way I see it, there's a, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of options here. You can either apologize and say I was right and you were wrong or there's the much more likely scenario where you show us the super cool piece of machinery that you use to properly repair all of this stuff. Uh, so this is Lewis. Say hi to the Linus Tech Tips folks. I'm sorry for your right hand too. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, that's no problem. So guys, this right here is where the magic happens. One does not repair PCBs in an oven. One uses one of these, that is to say if one can afford it. How much does one of these cost? About $7,300. About $7,300. And uh, Lewis here is going to walk us through the ins and outs of how this bad boy works, including you said you obtained a donor board. Do I actually get to operate it? Oh, yeah. You're the one who's going to be putting this on. That's the whole point of having you come here is to reduce my workload. Fantastic. Let's do it. OK, so I think we all saw this coming. Um, he's not apologizing. And he is definitely showing me how to do it the real way. So this right here is a PCH that was sourced from somewhere, because you can't actually buy this stuff directly from the manufacturer. That's one of your frustrations, right? Incredible. So maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. And then behind me, we've got a PCB from a main board that was literally thrown and had its PCH pop off. So without knowing if that works, and without knowing if this works, we are going to re-solder this BGA chip onto that PCB I'm going to do it, and it is not going to involve an oven, and it is hopefully going to work, but if it doesn't, then... That would be pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be fun either way. Okay, so step one is we want to tighten up these little retainers that use the mounting screw points, Whoop. and without uh, ruining it too hard, that use the mounting screw points on the PCB to hold it in place as securely as we, as we can. Next, we pull out this fancy pants camera. So we get a live feed right here of the solder points on the main board. Next step, we turn on the manual vacuum right here. Mm -hmm. We take our PCH, we orient it correctly, which, I mean, is there some guesswork involved there? Google image search and try to find the GIF that's above 50 by 50 pixels like I did five minutes before you came here. <laughs> Perfect. So we put this sucker on the little vacuum right there, hoping that it doesn't come off. There we go. So we've got a ring of LEDs on the top. We've got a ring of LEDs on the bottom. That makes sure we've got great illumination from all angles, both down here and up here. And then what we've got on this display are two superimposed images. So the brown version is the one below, and the blue version is the one above. And the idea is that we use our horizontal and vertical adjustment knobs here, as well as our angle adjustment knob right here, to try to align all the blue dots with all the brown smudges below them. Uh-huh. So as soon as I align it there, it stops aligning up there. Feel free to step in and correct what I'm doing at any point in time. Let's see. You can give yourself more light so you can see a little bit. Hey, there we go. You can zoom in and out. Oh. You got a joystick. How far in can we go? I honestly can't tell, but you have no way of checking if it's right until you just... Yeah, you don't know if it's right until you put it on. I'm just looking at one corner at a time. So I see that one's aligned. Yeah. The other this one looks okay. This is a pain in the ass. This part really is just a pain in the ass. So 
Is this pretty aligned? That's pretty aligned, I would say. Okay. Just get yourself a th thin layer of flux on there. Okay. For the next step, we will need the gloves. So now we put uh, just a line of flux just right down the middle. Yeah. So with the flux in place, we use this clean room wipe. As you can see, we are in a completely professional clean room environment here. So now we've got to check and see if our chip moved out of alignment from messing around with it. This thing messes with your eyes after a while, man. Let me tell you. Are we back on? I think that's actually good. Okay. I would say this is good. Okay, so next we move our light out of the way and we actually lower the chip. Whoa, that goes really fast. Oh, uh, it's gonna stop. Oh, geez, okay. See, see, right now it's touching the board. Once it's touching the board, then you turn the manual vacuum off and then you go back up. Okay. So now you can move the camera around and try to get it to focus. So you're, you're almost in focus. Okay, there you go. So now we can see the balls. I can't, I can't make heads or tails of this image though. You gotta be kidding me here. Okay, the point of this is just being able to see when the solder melts. So this allows us to see under it enough to know when we should apply heat and when we should stop applying heat to solder the connections. Okay, so hit me with your best shot. You hit start and you hope that nothing blows up. Seriously? Pretty much. So at this stage, we're actually ready to use the infrared heating elements all around to heat the general area, and then the two heating elements on the top and bottom to solder the chip to the PCB. But it's not as simple as just uh, the, the 200 degrees Celsius in an oven, which I noticed they have an oven. This is high quality right here. Yeah, I noticed you, you do have computer parts in your oven. Was that just to make fun of me when I got here? Exactly. Um, what you do is you, if you want to clean them off after you're done ultrasonic, you put it in here to get rid of the moisture. Before you do anything like this, you also have to put them in an oven at just around the boiling temperature of water just to get rid of any of the moisture that built up in the chips or else you get things like popcorn. And there I thought I was getting my apology yeah, after animation. all. All right, so what we do here is we have these profiles and it comes with some pre-programmed, but they're not very good. So you kind of have to trial and error it or use your experience or share, share online to figure out what exactly the temperatures are for the period of time and the ramp up and ramp down for each of those three heating elements. And then once you've got a profile, you press start and hope nothing catches on fire and hope that the solder melts. So once they melt, if the profile is set to run a little long, we can manually stop it and then start a manual cooling cycle in order to cool everything back down to a reasonable operating temperature. Wow, it's really hard to tell. So is it, is it, is it, is it melted? Stop. So we're stopping it now. We're deciding it's melted even though it's really hard to tell. Okay. Manual cooling, and now you get to watch the balls dry. Okay. It's important to dry off your balls when you're done any kind of uh, repair on them. So now that the cooling cycle is done, we lift this bad boy up. Is that all it lifts up? Oh, there it goes. Then Mr. Shark grabs the PCB and whoop, whoop, come on. And we put it, uh, that was it? We're not gonna let it cool down some more? Well, I wanna take a look at it first. This is the part of the class where the teacher is like, you know, oh, this part's kinda good, but this is shit. But your attendance is excellent. The suspense. You wanna look on that one? Hmm? You wanna look and see what it looks like? Sure. Yeah, yeah let's do it. All right, so let's have a quick look here. So what we're trying to see is whether the balls got soldered to the pads. Uh, your guess is much better than mine at this point in time. Let's see if it works. So we're just gonna fire it up and YOLO? Yeah. So here we go, moment of truth. We're gonna find out if a fan turns. Yeah. Come on, baby. I believe in you. Hmm. Oh, we got a flash of light. And we've got five volt, so it's powered. Got 3.3 volt on another test patch. Yep, no good. Oh. Uh, yeah, this, my, my bad luck rubbed off on me. We didn't fix it, but um, test subject 17A contributed to the betterment of our scientific knowledge in some way that, who am I kidding? It, not, not, we didn't learn anything today. But uh, thank you guys very much for tuning into this episode of how according to Lewis Rossman, one would actually fix something that had been 
if it had been damaged by, you know, something like uh, micro fractures in the solder joints or whatever the case may be. Because remember, whether it's a GPU like I very temporarily resurrected in the oven, because that won't last very long, whether it's a GPU or whether it's something else, there's a hundred things that could be wrong with it other than that. And you actually have to know what's wrong with it before you can attempt any kind of repair. So while I actually stand by the oven method as a way to put off buying a new video card while you save up for another few weeks, if you are completely out of warranty and you don't happen to have a $7,500 rework station, it is not the real way to actually fix anything and I'm glad that I got to at least try to do it properly. So uh, thank you very much for going through this process with us and uh, being a good sport about the whole thing and thanks to you guys for watching. Whoa! I transported back to our studio to bring you this message from Videoblocks. Videoblocks is a subscription-based stock media site that offers its members unlimited downloads from their library that features 115 plus thousand stock videos, 4K and HD clips, After Effects, motion backgrounds, and more with a royalty-free license. And in April, Videoblocks is celebrating the creative community. They're providing exclusive offers and content for new members like new video content from Discovery Channel, they're releasing cinemagraphs and they've got more surprise exclusive content that will be released throughout the month of April. Right now, we've got a special offer for our audience as well. You guys can get a one year subscription to Videoblocks right now for only 99 bucks, which ends up being about 90% off their monthly price. And when you get a one year subscription right now, they're also throwing in a one year Audioblocks subscription, which is a $950 value that provides you with access access to 100,000 plus royalty free tracks, loops, and sound effects. So for just $99, you get access to over 100,000 stock video clips on Videoblocks and over 100,000 stock audio ones on Audioblocks for an entire year. And all of them come with a royalty free license so you can use all of those products in your commercial products as well as personal products without any copyright concerns, which if you're a content creator, let me tell you, that's a thing. So Check out the offer and learn more about video blocks at the link in the video description. Remember guys, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit the dislike button. But if you liked it, hit like, leave a comment saying hi to Lewis. You could do that too. You could also check out his channel. He's got a lot of videos that are uh, basically tutorials about how to repair your stuff, uh, rants about Apple and the way that they lock out small repair shops from being able to repair their products, whether it's refusing to put alignment guides on their PCBs, whether it's refusing to provide uh, pinouts for the chips, whether it's refusing to tell you what exactly some stupid unlabeled thing is, um, or whether it's just their business practice in general. He's got rants about me. So if you're into that kind of thing, he's got at least one really good rant about me and what an idiot I am. So uh, check that out. And also don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget that if you like our videos, you can hit the like button on it. You can become a contributor. You can buy a cool shirt like this one. You can use Amazon uh, with our affiliate code. So we get a small kickback whenever you buy stuff or you can even give us a directly monthly contribution through our community forum. Now that you're done doing all that stuff and you're wondering, hmm, what should I watch next? Maybe check out the video that started this whole controversy where I baked a video card and uh, did manage to resurrect it, however temporarily it might have been, and made this gentleman mad in the process. So mad that I had to come all the way here to New York to make him feel better. Hopefully that's not how you feel better.